Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Yes, there's no renovation noises happening today, so I'm really happy. Hopefully they don't start drilling while I'm recording. Anyway, massive shout out and thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. I love talking with everyone in the comments and the community sub up here. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well. Because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. It's been unbelievable so far and we're just getting started in this space. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through. It would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the YouTube algorithm absolutely loves absolutely loves when you give these videos a thumbs up so down there i'm looking at it right now there it is right down there give it a good old tap it doesn't cost you anything it's free and it would really help me out all right also little disclaimer i am not a financial advisor please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff i do not want to see anyone get financially hurt that is why my number one golden rule is i only invest what i can afford to lose and yes we don't like to lose you can lose money like that in the blink of an eye in crypto all right so please be careful out there do your research. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the formalities are out of the way. Let's go straight to the community tab. Yes, here is $50 worth of mandarins. Um, it's hilarious because pretty soon these are going to be worth $50 for three mandarins. So that's facts right there. That's hilarious. Top altcoins that I am buying during this current market downturn right now. And I've seen some comments about, you know, why would you be buying on a downturn? Well, this is the ideal time to buy any investment when there's, you know, fear, uncertainty and doubt in the market. This is the prime time that I personally love buying investments such as, you know, cryptos and stocks and so forth, because this is where you see the biggest, you know, return on investment when the market goes up. You don't buy at the top, you buy at the bottom. And it takes a lot of guts for somebody to do that. It really does. I know it's hard, but that's what happens. Anyway, XRP, XLM, Quant, XDC, 75% of you are buying XRP. And I agree. And there's been some bullish news updates from uh, Brad Garlinghouse as well. I love his tweet. We'll get into that in a second as well. That's out of 623 votes, by the way. Let's go to CoinSpot. This is where I buy my cryptos in Australia. Please feel free to use the referral link below. You can get and will get $10 in Bitcoin if you do use that. Please do your own research, of course. All these prices are in Australian dollars. Australian dollars. Australian dollars. I will repeat myself. Australian dollars. Everything else is set to US dollars because I'm catering for my Aussie fans and everyone else around the world that watches my channel. So I'm very, very hospitable and welcoming. Anyway, let's have a look. Bitcoin sitting at 29,000 Australian dollars today, which is down significantly. Um, that's nearly 9% today, so it's not too good. But again, there's incredible buying opportunities. Ethereum's dropping 12%, $1,500. You've got Cardano at 70 cents. XRP's at 46 cents. Incredible buying opportunities. Solana's at $44. I may add some Solana into my portfolio. I'm not holding any. Doge at 8 cents. Now, this is getting pretty much to where I first bought Dogecoin around the four to five cent level. And that's no joke. I'm still holding a massive bag of that as well, because again, I took profits and put it into Bitcoin when it was pumping up to 80 cents. Uh, Tron's at eight cents, AVAX $23. You've got Litecoin at $66, Maddox at 56 cents. That's insane. So cheap. You've got Link at $9, Crows at 16 cents, Stellar's at 16 cents as well. Near Protocol's at $4.79. Algorand's at 44 cents right now. You've got uh, XCN pumping as well. This seems to be always going up and the market's down. Um, 12 cents right now. You've got VeChain at 3 cents. Mana's at $1.21. Hedera's at 9 cents. That is so good. Theta's at $1.79. I was buying this at $14, so I've taken a massive hit on that one. Sandbox at $1.24. Keeps going down here. Axe Infinity's at $20. I was buying this at $80. Dollar cost averaging in. IOTA's at 38 cents. The graph's at 14 cents. NEO's at $13. I've taken a massive one on that one. Uh, 33 cents for Phantom. Quant at $67. This has been holding up you know, quite nicely as well. Just putting it out there. I did buy some with Tether the other day. So I said I would. I would. And I have done that. I'm a man of my word. So Waves is $6.45. Zill's at $0.04. Cents. You've got Gala at $0.08 cents right now. And again, I'm bullish on that. Luna Classic as well is down. 
Only got a small bag of that, $102 worth of that. And uh, XDC is at $0.04 cents as well. And some other ones that I'm bullish on as well, and this has been on updates. Obviously, there's Reef, which I love. That's under a cent right now. So that one, I think, is going to make you know a big comeback when DeFi makes a massive comeback. Uh, and XYO, again, that's under a cent. This is getting close to where the levels I bought before it absolutely went crazy um, to $0.10 cents when it got listed on Coinbase. Um you know, again, this is getting very close. I, I was buying in a double zero five and six. So this is, to me, this is a bargain right now. Just putting it out there. Anyway, let's have a look at the news right now. We'll go to crypto bubbles. All right, let me refresh this right now. It is a bloodbath. It looks like a vampire's been here. There is just red everywhere. The only one here is XCN as well as USDN. Again, there's really nothing much to show here. The market's obviously going through a pretty rough patch at the moment. So again, I don't look at this as a negative. I turn, turn this into a positive and think there's some incredible buying opportunities to dollar cost average. I'm not going to go throwing thousands and thousands of dollars into these now. We'll not do that. I've got a plan and I think everybody should have their own plan, their own investment strategy. Dollar cost averaging is the best thing I've ever you know, discovered. And again, that's sitting an amount of money investing in every single week or month, whenever you can, an amount of money that you stick to it and you stick to that plan and you stay consistent and just dollar cost average, meaning you put in a small amount of money every single week or month. That is it. That's all dollar cost averaging is. And therefore, you know, you're not really worried about the volatility. You're just slowly increasing your positions in your favorite or desired assets. Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. Axe Infinity is down to $13. You've got Hex. Uh, man, not really not really a fan of Hex, ladies and gentlemen. That's the honest the truth. Solana right here, you've got $30. Again, I might add some Solana into my portfolio. VeChain, I'm very bullish on. That's at $0.02 cents right now. Well, sorry, yeah, two cents right now. Again, that's insanely cheap. Um, you've got Polkadot as well. I'm not holding any Polkadot. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should add that into portfolio. I've seen some pretty crazy price predictions for that one. Uh, what else we've got here, ladies and gentlemen? That's pretty much it. Aave, 14%. It is down. Everything is down. Blood in the streets. Now, moving on to Ripple. Brad Garlinghouse. I'm not going to read this on here because I'll probably get in trouble, but have a look at this. Brad Garlinghouse. Ripple is hiring hundreds and ro hundreds of roles. We, we have a no A holes policy how good is that he's a legend ripple brad garlinghouse has announced that the company is currently hiring despite the ongoing crypto winter mr garlinghouse cautioned that ripple has a no a holes policy and i like that i like that ripple will be con 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 uh, sorry conducting i'm losing my words conducting a recruitment event in toronto canada on june 23rd brad garlinghouse the ceo of the remittance focused company ripple has announced that the company is looking to hire new staff despite the ongoing crypto bear market it's going to close pop up here which is nice i mean when you think about it every crypto you know company out there has been letting staff go which is terrible but ripple's hiring people what does that tell you what does that tell you and the SEC is trying to stop them from, you know, you know, having this incredible growth in the United States when they could be employing people. The SEC is trying to destroy them. Ugh. Anyway, Gensler, we'll have a wake up call, buddy. Go and have a, go and have a, go and have a, uh, a cup of tea somewhere and just disappear for a while. Um, has announced the company is looking to hire new staff. On, uh, and again, some crypto-based organizations reduced the size of their workforce or close, close shop completely, which we've seen happen as well. So according to Mr. Garlinghouse, Ripple is hiring for hundreds of roles around the globe, both in person and remote. Uh, he, however, warned that the Ripple has no a-hole policy uh, as it looks to have a favorable culture within the organization. He shared Ripple's hiring activity through the following tweet. I mean, that's awesome. And I retweeted that as well. So I'm very bullish on that as well. Ripple is just awesome. Some updates about the lawsuit. Ripple claims the SEC is attempting to conceal its flaws from public criticism. They are really just being ridiculous right now. They're being like kids in the playground. Ripple has fired off three-page response to the SEC's submission of proposed redactions to the SEC's letter opposing Movens' motion to file an amicus brief regarding one of the SEC's experts right now. So as stated in a brief shared by defense lawyer James K. Filan, the Ripple defendants stated that no objections to the SEC moved to seal uh, off some exhibits in their entirety, including those identifying information about the expert. It states that the SEC decided to seal the remainder of the exhibits and its proposed redactions of the op opposition letter it filed. Ripple feels that the SEC is not, has not satisfied the standards and sealing of documents. Furthermore, the SEC has requested redactions of pages that de uh, demonstrate the weakness of the expert's analysis. These pages do not pose any safety risks but instead appear to be targeting targeting information that would reflect weakness in the SEC case um 
you know, pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, I think the SEC is going to lose this court case, um, you know, by the way they're behaving. I hope the Judge Torres and Judge Netburn actually realize that because they're being absolutely ridiculous. Moving on to some other news right now. You've got Elon Musk is being sued $258 billion for promoting Dogecoin. We all knew this was coming. Um, but again, uh, it's just ridiculous. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, everybody promotes every cryptocurrency on, on the uh, on the Twitters right now. So again, I don't know why. It's just because he's, you know, a billionaire and he's been a massive target anyway. So a disgruntled investor has am ambitiously suing is ambitiously suing the world's richest man for more money than he has. So that's terrible right there. Let me just get rid of that. An American citizen named by Keith Johnson is seeking $258 billion in damages from Elon Musk for, pro for promoting Dogecoin. Johnson claims that Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX were part of the crypto pyramid scheme and were partaking in illegal racketeering. Come on, honestly, Dogecoin is currently 92% down from its all-time high. It was not him. I mean... If you're going to invest, have the mindset that you're going to lose. Don't go suing people for that if your own losses. It's just ridiculous. You know, go go sue someone like Gensler. You know, Gary Gensler. He should be, he's the one that should be the target of a lawsuit. Anyway, moving on. Circle launches. Circle launch suit. Circle launches the Europeg stablecoin, Euro C. Every country and you know nation at the moment is going out and going for their own stable coins. I mean, Novadi. Group, Ripple and XLM have AUDC. Now Circle is launching the Euro uh, stablecoin right now. So Boston-based stablecoin issuer Circle plans to roll out Europeg stablecoin, providing a liquid and a stable means of obtaining exposure to the single European currency. Dubbed the Eurocoin, EuroC, uh, the new asset is issued under the same full uh, reserve model of Circle's USDC. Uh, a stablecoin pegged to the US dollar currency with more than four, $54 billion in circulation as well. Created to satisfy the euro-based crypto enthusiasts, Circle believes that the new token can provide protection during periods of extreme volatility in the market while improving the risks and return metrics of crypto investment portfolios. That's cool. Again, um, I'm just bullish on Ripple's side of things because again, they've got much, much more power in terms of banks and institutions as well. So... Whatever, man. This is what we're going to see a lot of stable coins being launched by countries as well. And um, we'll see what happens with this. Moving on. You know, this is interesting as well. Uh, in this news update, if it wants to load, uh, here we got here the state securities regulators investigate Celsius over withdrawal suspension. Uh, so reports from different media outlets in the last week also suggest that Celsius Network has lost major backers and onboarded new attorneys amid the volatile crypto market. Securities regulators from five US states have reportedly opened an investigation into the crypto lending platform Celsius Network over its decision to suspend user withdrawals. Now, I know um, BitBoy, again, I'm a fan of his channel as well. He's uh, starting a lawsuit or a class action, uh, a class action lawsuit against Celsius as well. He's not able to withdraw money. There's a lot of people not able to withdraw money from Celsius. So um, that's devastating to see that. And uh, this is a lot of fear out there because people can't withdraw money from staking platforms. You know, you had the Luna and UST collapse with Anchor. I mean, I remember Anchor. I, was, I literally was going to put money into that as well. And I'm glad I didn't kind of thing. But a lot of people got wrecked out of that. Same with Celsius as well. Now, they're just, I hate it when companies do this. Oh, and by the way, that arbitrage software system idea that I put forward, the software developers actually took off on me. Can you believe that? Um, you know, a big company here in Australia, they just haven't gotten back to me. Just completely ignored me um, after I had my last meeting. So it's still in, pipeline, in the pipeline, ladies and gentlemen. Just letting you know, uh, just giving you an update as well. But anyway, moving on. Tag Heuer, Swiss luxury watchmaker. Tag Heuer introduces NFT-enabled smartwatch. Watches, blockchain, and NFTs combine with the uh, launch of Tag Heuer's new luxury wearable you know, NFT watch right here. So the NF Tag Heuer has partnered with the well-known non-fungible NFT community surrounding Board Ape Yacht Club and Clone X to create a smartwatch that displays NFTs and connects crypto wallets such as MetaMask and Ledger Live. Like I would want an NFT on a watch. Um, I'm old school with my watches, as you can see here. Um, again, I'm old school with mine. I do not like smartwatches at all. I hate them. Um, we have mobile phones or cell phones, you want to call them. I don't want to wear an NFT. And personally, I'm not a big fan of NFTs either. Um, I, although they will have a massive part in the future, just saying they will, especially with purchasing real estate, which would be incredible to have real estate on the, uh, as an NFT. Anyway, moving on. Some other news right here. 
This Oracle data provider platform has surpassed 4 million nodes since its inception. I am bullish on XYO. It's one of my favorite projects. I got in very early with this, but now we're getting back to those levels, which I did get in. So it's an incredible buying opportunity. So it can fully functional Oracle network ecosystem that anonymously collects and validates geospatial location specific data exist. One blockchain firm seems to have gotten the gist of the idea founded in 2012. XY Labs and the namesake ECA protocol XYO, which was built on the Ethereum blockchain, seek to reward participants for uh, for the Genesis inception, uh, interpret uh, sorry interpretation sorry um, analysis and storage of data uh, to be called upon for specific problems. There are currently over four million nodes worldwide on the XYO network. In a recent Ask Me Anything AMA session with Coin Telegraph Markets Pro. Ari Taro, uh, founder of XY Labs, forgive me for pronouncing your name, Tro, forgive me for pronouncing your name wrong, um, found fundamental XY ecosystem uh, is a special type of payload uh, called Bound Witnesses right now. It contains a list of user input data points that are signed by one or more nodes in the XYO network. They can be modified to include time, date, and location and be signed by nodes as to reflect the certainty of the embedded data. Getting pretty technical right there. I've been bullish on XYO. Geospatial tracking technology is incredible. Can be used for everything medical, you know, rental cars, luggage. It's awesome. So again, I'm bullish on that one. Now, um, again... Just some other quick ones here right now because I don't want to keep this video too long. So further downside is expected, but multiple data points suggest Bitcoin is undervalued. I think it is definitely undervalued. If it dips any lower than this, I will buy Bitcoin. I think it's going to be an incredible asset and it will go eventually to a million dollars. That's facts. It will hit that. Once it hits its you know maximum supply and circulating supply, it will go up in value because there's none left. That's it. And all the institutions will want to buy it because they want to hold the majority right there and control the money. And again, some other updates here. I'm a rock and roll um, fan. Kiss singer Gene Simmons claims he hasn't sold his Litecoin and 13 other crypto holdings right there. There he is. Again, he's a big crypto head himself. And again, he likes crypto, which again, for me is cool, but he's a bit of a nutcase. Just saying. Anyway, let's move on. Cryptometer.io. Let me refresh this right now. Wait for it to load. Let's go. BNB, USDC, BNX. You've got uh, Gary. Gary, I like that name. Anyway, CTXC, Sandbox, Chimp, CHMB. I believe that's Shiba Inu, Fet, and Axie Infinity. If you go to the last day, there's a lot, guys. Wrapped, BTC, ADA, BNB. You've got Link, AVAX, XRP, Nice, LM, Mana, XMR, Monero, Hive, and CHMB. Let's go to Twitter. Have a quick look here, ladies and gentlemen. This is an interesting um, interview right here. Paul Barron Network, thank you for this. Have a listen to this, ladies and gentlemen in financial market. I think yep. the issue with crypto right now, there's a multitude of issues with crypto, but you know what? There's one thing, and I talked about this last night on a show, you, there's one thing you, you just don't do in financial markets. It's rule number one, and that is never tell someone they can't get their money. And when yeah. you have a situation like the collapse of uh, Terra and Luna, and then the concern mm -hmm. about stable coins, and then all of a sudden that flows into what happened um, with Celsius, Celsius, yep. and, and, and that's just not cool. Now all of a sudden you're thinking, could that happen to Coinbase? That's what's happening, I think, right now. People are saying, the hell with this. I don't want to put my stuff on a drive. I'm just out of this. I'm done with this. If it can happen at Celsius, which is, they had a nice website, they had a great app. You know, that's all you need these days, right? It's pretty, uh, and, and maybe some confetti. So what happened is that I think a lot of people are, are getting blindsided by this. And the reality is, is it overvalued? Is it undervalued? Is Ether or, or Bitcoin? I think it's all a matter of they're telling people that they can't have their money and people are freaking out. Right. That's true. And again, that's why I'm so against staking in platforms, giving people my crypto, which I've done. I've suffered that. Everyone knows that. I'm not doing that again. All I'm doing is buying and holding. That is it. When the price goes up, I will take profits. That's as simple as that. And you know what? I've got friends that have done that and they've made incredible returns just by doing that as well. Digital Perspectives, thank you for this tweet. Have a listen to this video, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to what's going on in the news that the actual mainstream media news is not you know, playing to people. Listen to this. Have a look. Today. A boost for digital trade as well as data flows between Singapore and the UK. A bilateral digital econ economy agreement or UKSDA comes into force today. Now, the UK SDEA was signed earlier this year. It is Singapore's first such agreement with a European country, the first ever for the UK. 
Businesses stand to benefit from paperless trading and seamless data flows. The agreement also provides greater online protection for consumers and secure cross-border payments. This agreement will make it much easier to operate in, our, in and across both markets as the need to navigate different rules and standards is significantly reduced. So we'll hope you build on this new digital network and use the networks that we've built to scale. Abus XTC, XRP, XLM, IOTA, Quant, come on, listen to what's happening right here. Many prayed for a chance, Eric Weiss, thank you for this. Many prayed for a chance to buy Bitcoin at these prices again. Few will actually have the courage to buy. And that's that's so true right there. There's my mandarins. Uh, again, there's an interview with Kevin O'Leary. Go and have a watch of that. CEO of Ethereum in a bear suit right there. Uh, a onesie. CEO of Bitcoin. All the mining rigs. CEO of um, Ripple right there. Legend. No a-hole policy right there. How good is that? I love him. Anyway, so the SEC has submitted to the court for an in-camera review three categories of documents related to the motion asserting that attorney-client privilege protects internal documents related to Hinman's speech. How many opinions did they have? How many uh, drafts did they have of this speech? Ridiculous. Come on, judge. I would throw this out of the, ca the courts or just rule against the SEC. I would do that. This is interesting as well. Blockworks, wealth funds in the Middle East want to allocate into Bitcoin, but can't for regulatory reasons. That's why I'm so bullish on crypto because we're ahead of these guys. XYO, love the project. Have a look at this. The metaverse will completely alter human connection, commerce and business. XYO co-founder uh, joins um, Jill Melandrino. Uh, on NASDAQ Trade Talks at Consensus 2022 at Coindesk. Have a listen to this. Metaverse might be a mindset. It's fluid, right? There's like 50 shades of gray, it feels like, where it's, it's, it can be, can be really any, any, anything uh, what you want it to be. Right. It is, it's, it's, Metaverse might be a mindset as well, right? It's fluid. It can be anything. The Metaverse can be anything. I'm telling you, it's going to be absolutely crazy when this thing arrives. For your information uh, from this afternoon's Wall Street Journal, Celsius is crashing and crypto investors are spooked. Duh, what do you reckon? Anyway, that's just, I mean, James K. Filan, you're a legend, but I mean, the Wall Street Journal, come on, just look at the big picture here, what's happening in crypto. Anyway, SEC must stop rejecting Bitcoin and spot ETF, says SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce. Well, that's Gensler. He's rejecting everything. $200 million has been liquidated from the cryptocurrency market in the past 24 hours. 24 hours. $1.1 trillion has been wiped out from the cryptocurrency market in the past 77 days. Devastating right here. I am keeping an eye on the library case with the SEC as well. That's just a bloodbath right there. And again, the SEC has gone after a smaller crypto project, you know, obviously to get the uh, precedent set. And that's my honest opinion. I think that's what's happened right now. Uh, Fear and Greed Index is sitting at seven. Again, Elon Musk right now is just in a whole world of trouble there, getting sued by someone who's just, you know, cracked it with his portfolio downturns. XDC has been listed on Huobi Global, which is nice. So keep an eye on XDC. Uh, Andrew Grass helped hire more than about 200 people at Coinbase earlier this year. Now most of those hires and Grass himself, Grass, Grass himself are gone. That's not a good look. Cardano, bullish on that one. Ecosystem of DApp surpasses 1,000 protocol milestone. And again, this is interesting as well. SEC to allows Ripple to work with MoneyGram. SEC sues Ripple to money, so MoneyGram can work with them. Stellar organization, almost the same tech can work with MoneyGram and doesn't get sued by the SEC. Stellar org, uh, MoneyGram, CirclePay work together now. I was born at night, but not last night. This is interesting as well. Go and have a look at that. Uh, what else we got here? Boom, digital, oh, sorry, di document Ripple. Uh, the author, uh, Loomis and Gillibrand, Crypto Bill believes it's clear that the SEC has given up on calling XRP a security. Go and have a watch of that one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to play it. It's going to go forever, this video. Let's have a look at coin market cap right now. $884 billion. That is down significantly, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I see this as opportunity, turning a negative into a positive. $74 billion in volume. It is quite low today. 44% BTC, 14% Ethereum. Can XRP dethrone Bitcoin? Potentially, I think it could. It's going to be a long shot. Can it dethrone Ethereum? Yes, I agree with that one. I think it definitely can. Uh, let's have a look at my favorite cryptos right now.
Again, the banking ones, ladies and gentlemen, these are real utility right here. XRP, 31 cents USD. Stellar's at 8, 10 cents. Algorand's at 29 cents. Hedera's at 6 cents. IOTA's at 20, uh, 25 cents. Uh, what else we've got here, ladies and gentlemen? You've got Quant at 44 US dollars and XDC at 2 cents. And again, this is my entire crypto portfolio. Bitcoin sitting at 20,000 USD right now. I think it will drop below this over the weekend. It's Friday, obviously. And yes, it always does. So again, just dollar cost averaging, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty much it. All right. Thank you very much for sticking around this long to the video. I really appreciate you. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll talk to you in the comments and the community tab. We'll speak to you tomorrow. All right. Peace, ladies and gentlemen. Bye.